Welcome back. We're on video number 44 of the Amateur Extra License Exam Study from Sub-Element 9, Charlie, now. We're talking about antennas and some pretty deep stuff. Now, I will go ahead and say that if you want to try these out in the Easy NEC antenna software by Whiskey 7 Echo Lima, you could build these inside that program and simulate them and kind of see how it happen, how, how it works. What type of radiation pattern is created by two one-quarter wavelength vertical antennas spaced a half wavelength apart and fed 180 degrees out of phase? You're going to get a figure eight oriented along the axis of the array. And what this is, it uses constructive and destructive interference, and it's called wave forming or wave shaping. And there's all kinds of antennas that folks have built that take advantage of this, like the Foursquare, and you just use a selector box to figure out where is that figure eight going to point, and that gives you your gain in that direction. What type of radiation pattern is created by two quarter wavelength vertical antennas spaced a quarter wavelength apart and fed 90 degrees out of phase? And that is going to give you the cardioid pattern, and cardioid kind of looks like a butt. Now, microphones tend to have the cardioid pattern where they reject noise from the rear end. What type of radiation pattern is created by two one-quarter wavelength vertical antennas spaced a half wavelength apart and fed in phase? Well, now you get a figure eight broadside to the axis of the array. So instead of being this way along your antenna, it's now going this way from your two antennas. Pew! And that's wave shaping or wave forming. What happens to the radiation pattern of an unterminated long wire antenna as the wire length is increased? Well, what happens then is you get additional lobes formed with major lobes increasingly aligned with the axis of the antenna. Do not have a picture for that. What is the purpose of feeding an off-center fed dipole between the center and one end of at the midpoint okay I read that wrong I'm gonna read it again what is the purpose of feeding an off-center fed dipole between the center and one end instead of at the midpoint that is to create a similar feed point impedance on multiple bands so a OCFD is going to require a tuner of some sort but that is to create a similar feed point impedance on multiple bands instead of a center fed dipole which is good mainly for one band. What is the effect of adding a terminating resistor to a rhombic or long wire antenna? And it changes the radiation pattern from bidirectional to unidirectional. You can do you a little search on some rhombic antennas and see all kinds of cool stuff. And if you got enough room in your yard, you can make one. What is the approximate feed point impedance at the center of a two-wire, half-wave, folded dipole antenna? And that is 300 ohms. So here's what the folded dipole antenna looks like. It's a half-wave, and then it comes back with two quarter wavelengths to your feed line. And you see a lot of these outside the uh, fire stations and whatnot, because they're they're very simple to make. What is a folded dipole antenna? Hey, we just did that. A half wave dipole with an additional parallel wire connecting its two ends. Now there's a little more to it than just that because the spacing between them matters, but the, that is a folded dipole antenna. Additional parallel wire. Which of the following describes a G5 RV antenna? It is a wire antenna center fed through a specific length of open wire line connected to a ballon and coaxial feed line. So this is the G5RV and they're very common. These are very common antennas and cut to 92 feet. It's going to get you all of these wonderful bands right here. Some of them require a tuner. 
and you can see the 450 ohm ladder line and then it goes through a ballon and then you get to the antenna tuner and then back to your uh your your radio and that is the g5rv according to palomar engineers which the following describes a zep antenna and that is an n fed half wavelength dipole and the zep looks like this hmm very interesting it looks just like a dipole it looks kind of like a g5rv almost it's just that this one's cut to a half wavelength of the lowest frequency of operation pretty nifty stuff all right let's get back you're just these are different antenna types so i guess if you're on the radio and you're talking about hey i'm using a zep antenna well now you have an idea about what it is without having to look it up how is the far field elevation pattern of a vertically polarized antenna affected by being mounted over seawater versus soil the far field elevation pattern is radiation at low angles increases so the radiation at low angles increases being over salt water is almost like the most perfect ground so uh, if you go out on some seawater and play radio with a vertical then you get some some good stuff some good dx some just the signals are great it's it's fun to do even murky water provides better gain than than just some regular old dried dirt which of the following describes an extended double zep antenna so the double zep antenna is a center fed one and a quarter wavelength dipole so it's not a half wavelength it's one and a quarter and this particular west mountain radio not a sponsor but they have all of these lengths figured out for you so you can pick whichever one you want to build and they have a calculator for you how does the radiation pattern of a horizontally polarized antenna vary with increasing height above the ground? The takeoff angle of the lowest elevation lobe decreases. So as the antenna goes up, the angle goes down. And that has, I think, a lot to do with the ground reflections. Don't have as much destruction on your, uh, your, your pattern there. So... Try that out in Easy NEC. How does the radiation pattern of a horizontally polarized antenna mounted above a long slope compare with the same antenna mounted above flat ground? The main lobe takeoff angle decreases in the downhill direction. So again, you're talking about height above ground. This time, the height above ground just varies over the length of the antenna. And that is the end of Echo 9 Charlie. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it helps. Watch it again if you need to. And there's nothing wrong with cheating on me. If you need to go find some other study materials to supplement what I've gone over, the more that you immerse yourself in it, the easier this test will be. Go ahead and start taking some practice tests too, because you're going to learn some stuff there when you get answers right and get answers wrong. Hey, I'm Robbie W1RCP. I'm doing this so I can help some folks out. W1RCP, out.